All right. Good morning, guys. I'm here to talk to you guys on chapter, let's see, we're on chapter 18 now, lesson one. So yesterday's lesson, I uh, asked you to actually label a map, um, and it was just of the peninsula, of the Korean peninsula. So here, and I believe I asked you to label cities, mountain ranges, bodies of water, and um the three kingdoms that we're talk that are going to be discussed in this lesson. All right, so I will look through those. I know you were supposed to submit it this morning. Let's look here at. The, um, we're going to start with lesson one, the civilizations of Korea, Japan, and Southeast Asia. Lesson one is on the history and culture of Korea. <clears throat> so it says here, the mountainous Korean Peninsula lies between China and Japan. Korea has been called a bridge between China and Japan. The Chinese and the Japanese civilizations have influenced Korea in many ways. The Koreans have mixed these influences with their own traditions to create a unique culture. The first Koreans were nomads. They came from northern or central Asia. The early Koreans lived in villages with no central government. They grew rice and made tools and weapons of bronze. Later, they used iron to make these make these items. Excuse me. The early Koreans believed in shamanism. They thought that certain people called shamans could communicate with good and evil spirits. In 109 BC, the Chinese took control of northern part of the Korean Peninsula. The Koreans drove them out 300 years later. Three separate kingdoms emerged. The three kingdoms were the Kuro in in the north, the Paki in the southwest and Silla in the southeast. During the Three Kingdoms period, Chinese cultures spread from Kuyo to Paki and Silla. People started to use the Chinese writing system. They also accepted the beliefs of Buddhism and Confucianism. Each kingdom used China's government as a model. A powerful king ruled with the help of educated officials and nobles. Japanese merchants, artisans, and scholars settled in Paki. They introduced Japanese culture there. Korean culture also blossomed. In Silla, a queen named Sundok built a, built a stone observatory. This is a structure for viewing space, an observatory is. The building still stands today and is considered the oldest observatory in Asia. In the 8500s and 8600s, the three kingdoms fought wars for control of the Korean peninsula. In one battle, China helped Silla conquer Paki and Kuro. Silla controlled most of the Korean peninsula. The rise of Silla brought a time of peace. Society was made up of a few nobles at the top and a large group of farmers below. All right, it says the government gave land to farmers. It also built irrigation systems for rice, for rice fields. More food was produced, trade increased, and the economy grew. Silla kings also encouraged the arts, mainly the building of Buddhist temples. One temple was nine sto a nine-story wooden tower, one of the tallest structures in East Asia at the time. Another achievement by Silla was printing Buddhist sacred writings with wooden blocks. All right, so let's look at question number one right here. It says, what is shamanism? And shamanism is a belief that people called shamans could communicate with good and evil spirits. We'll, we're going to skip over question two, and let's look at question three. Which types of Japanese people settled in Korea? I want you to think about that for a second. It was merchants, artisans, and scholars. All right, let's look at question number four. How did outside influence affect early Korea? It had an impact on Korea's culture and its government. All right, number five, it says... What was the effect of giving land to, to the farmers and building irrigation systems during the Silla Kingdom? So more food was used to produce more food was used and produced. Trade increased and the economy grew. So that's why um, farmers were um, given land and it helped the um, helped the economy grow. All right, so let's look here at Korean civilization right here. It says, after years of conflict, the Silla Kingdom collapsed. Nobles in the north fought to claim power. By 8935, a general named Wang Kong had won. He was the first Korean ruler to unite all of Korea. He founded the Kuro Dynasty. 
it stayed in, <clears throat> it's, excuse me, it stayed in power for 400 years, this dynasty did. The Kuro rulers set up a code of law. Like China, they based their civil service system on examinations. Buddhism continued to spread under the leadership. Korean artisans developed movable metal type. They printed one of the world's oldest books using metal type. They also perfected the art of making celadon, a fine porcelain pottery known for its green color. In AD 1231, the Mongols invaded nor the northern part of Korea. After 25 years of struggle, the royal family surrendered to Mongol rule. The Korean people suffered greatly under the rule of the Mongols. Thousands of Koreans were forced to build ships for Kublai Khan attempt for, excuse me, I'll read that sentence again. Thousands of Koreans were forced to build ships for Kublai Khan. Attempts to invade China, excuse me, Japan, not China. I was looking at another word. All right, Korea under the Mongols. So those are the things that, um, under Mongol rule, that they did here. All right, those four bullet points. Let's look here. In 1392, the Korean general Yi Sung Jai, I'm going to say, founded a new dynasty. Some of you may be able to pronounce that a little bit better than me. Um, founded a new dynasty. The new ruling family was known as the Yi Dynasty. It lasted for over 500 years. Yi rulers set up their capital in Haesong. Hansong, excuse me. This site is in this site is now in Seoul, the, the modern capital of South Korea. One of the greatest Yi Song was Sejong. He ruled from 1394 to 1450. Sejong was interested in science and technology. He used bronze to make the first instruments that people used to measure the amount of rainfall. He was also involved in producing sundials and globes. The globes showed the position and the motion of planets. All right, let's look at the next page. Here at the top. Look at my notes. So it says here, Sejong and his ad, um, excuse me, Sejong and his advisors work to spread literacy or the ability to read among the Korean people. They created an alphabet called the Hangul. The Chinese and Japanese alphabet use, use thousands of characters. Hangul uses one letter for each sound. Similar to the English alphabet, Hangul is still, is still the standard writing system in Korea today. In 1592, Japanese forces attacked Korea. With Chinese help, the Koreans were able to win the land battles. They were also successful at sea because, because of their new inventions. The world's first iron-covered ships, called turtle ships. In the early 1600s, the Koreans were attacked by a Chinese dynasty known as, Man, as the Manchus. The Yi dynasty was defeated. It had to pay tribute to, to show that it surrendered to the Manchu rulers. So here is the invasion of Korea, this chart right here. All right, so let's go back one, and let's look at question number six here. That's where we left off earlier. So it says, underline the names of the generals that were responsible for founding Korean dynasties. So if we look right here, it is Wang, Wang Kong, and so it's this right here, where you can see that. And the other general responsible for founding Korean dynasties is Yi Sung Jai. And like I said, some of you may be able to pronounce that a little bit better than me. All right, number seven, name two of Sejong's achievements. So there were several achievements that he had, and that was found in this paragraph and then the one on the next page. So he supported science and technology. He helped produce water clocks. So that's a way of measuring rainfall. Sundials and globes he used to study planets, the motion of, um, of planets. He helped spread literacy to help people to read. And he developed, um, helped to create the Hangul system of writing. So that's, those are what his achievements were, Sejong's. I gave you more than two. All right, let's look at question number eight here. It says, how does Hangul differ from the writing system of China and Japan? Well, here is where it talked about um, the Hangul writing system of Korea. And the Hangul's use one letter for each sound. Chinese and Japanese um, 
writing systems use thousands of characters, and um, the Hangul is very similar to the English uh, writing system. Let's look at question number nine right here. How did the building of turtle ships help the Koreans? The iron-covered ships help Korea defeat the Japanese in sea battles. Or in a sea battle, let's see. Alright, so what I want you to do for lesson one, I would like you to, here, I want you to list the in your lesson, chapter 18, lesson one notes. I want you to list the three kingdoms right here. Make sure you do that. I want you to define shamanism. I want you to go back and tell me the third, it says, um, answer number three again. I already went over that. Which types of Japanese people settled in Korea? I listed three. Okay. I would also like you to name the two generals that were responsible for, for founding Korean dynasties. And you can list two of Sejong's achievements in your notes. Um, identify, I want you to, um, about the Hangul, the differences between the Hangul writing system and the Japanese and the Chinese writing systems. And also write this chart down in your notes, the invasion of Korea. Um, and this is just kind of like a time, um, a timeline chart that breaks down the invasions of Korea when they happened. All right. And that's all for lesson one. Thanks guys for listening.